Hey, welcome to the weekly update. It's Chuck Mayer. I'm getting ready to take you through what came in this week. Follow me. One of the things I want to mention is one thing that surprises me every week that half of the customers that come in here don't know anything about. And that's the simple thing of water conditioner. Fish live in an environment that is very different than the environment we live in. They live in a box and they live in an environment filled with water, which is also filled with chemicals and non-chemicals that are not good for them. The number one thing you have to do with any fish aquarium is get the water right before the fish goes in. A lot of people lose their fish when they're doing water changes and they don't know to add stuff to the tap water that they're changing. And while we here at Fishy Business are no proponent of tap water, we sell RO water, reverse osmosis water, water that is much, much safer, that has been stripped of all the negative things and kept in all the good things. Regardless of what we do, we use water conditioner. I'm, I've signaled out Prime, but we have many different types of water conditioners here. Basically what this is doing is it's taking out a lot of the impurities that are in your tap water, chlorine, chloramine, things that are in there that you need to remove for the fish's safety. Also, when you have ammonia spikes and things like that, Prime actually will bind that and keep the toxicity from hurting your fish for up to a couple of days. So just by adding Prime whenever you're having a negative situation with your water quality can a lot of times help the environment that you're creating for these fish. But water conditioners are the most important thing and there are many different varieties. Just ask one of the salespeople on the floor, tell them what kind of fish you have, what the situation is like or what you want to do and we'll get you with the water conditioner that will work best for you. Another product that we have for you saltwater guys, especially your reef guys that have to battle bubble algae, valonia, things like that that come with certain types of algae. Vibrant works fantastic in a hair algae type situation. It's not the number one thing I would, I would recommend for specifically thick hair algae, but lots of different algaes are positively affected by the use of this product. We, don't, we keep it in as much as we can, but it usually moves off the shelf pretty quick. But it's always good to keep some on hand because bubble algae, valonia, things like that can creep into the tank through corals that you bring in, through rocks that you may change and add, but this is one of those products that for algae control in a marine aquarium is a number one. Okay, so we're gonna work this back to front today. So we're gonna start actually in the invertebrate system with saltwater fish. Lots of new cleaner shrimp came in this week. Lots of blood shrimp came in this week. Algae blennies, which are great for eating that algae. Beautiful starfish and slightly larger leopard grasses came in this week. There are one of the coolest fish that I have come to love and it's not a fish that you would probably ever notice if you came in, but these scissor tail gobies. Really, really cool bar-like goby that stays mid-water in the tank that you can actually get to school in the tank. They don't take up a, too much of a, a large amount of space, but if you want a fish that does really well, that will school in a saltwater tank. You don't have to worry about quantity or how much you're putting in or something like that. These scissor tail gobies, are, they hang out right in the midwater of the tank, which is really, really cool because you can replicate something that is naturally happening in saltwater. Uh, we also are back in business with clownfish. I finally got a good bit of clownfish this week, so we're definitely gonna target those. I have Ocellaris clowns, I have black Ocellaris clowns, black snowflake clownfish pairs. I have platinum ice clownfish, larger Ocellaris clownfish, another really larger pair of black ice clownfish that are really cool. Uh, some really cool damsels this week came in, an ornate wrasse, sailfin tangs, sohole tangs, scopus tangs, a lot of new in salt water. One of the things that's happening though right now is we're actually outside purchasing some other saltwater fish. So more fish will be coming in along and along this weekend. Those are just some quick highlights of stuff that came in this week. One thing I wanna to mention too, this is very important for all you coral guys. Guy is gonna have a special section of corals this week, especially Saturday and Sunday only. If I remember right, I think there's gonna be at least 50 corals that are $10 that he's got priced really low. 
So if you're in the market for some for some uh, crags, this is a great weekend. We just came back from the coral show uh, in the upstate last weekend, and there are a lot of new corals in here anyway. You should come take a look at some of these. All of these right through here, and especially these torches, green torches, and especially these gold torches. You've got to look at these gold torches that we brought back from the show. A beautiful coral. With fresh water, a lot of new stuff came in this week, and one of the things that I want to point out are these electric blue rams and these large Florida raised neon tetras, both in the same tank together. So it shows you the compatibility of a very communal freshwater fish with a cichlid, if you will. These are beautiful, beautiful fish. They really, really would look good in a planted aquarium. But these came in this week. I also want to turn you around and check out the guppies that came in this week. Again, the last couple weeks, guppies of all things have been running extremely well and extremely beautiful. So if you're in the market for guppies, we've got a lot of flavors in both blues and yellows and auburns, reds, blacks, just about everything. I have to point them out again just because pea puffers are back in stock. These are the same little guys that came in last week. We have a few of them left. So if you're in the market for a cute little ET looking puffer, these are, these are for you. I always harp on rainbows, but the quality was exceptional this week. The turquoise rainbows and the Bosmani rainbows, even at their size, are already coloring up like adults. The Madagascar reds look phenomenal as well. Those are the three standouts in the rainbow section. I don't usually point out a lot of large fish that come in, but they're an exceptional extra large Obano Oscar came in that is beautiful quality. This one was obviously loved and cared for. There's not a lot of ripped fins or hole in the head or diseases that are so common with large cichlids, especially Oscars. And this is a very beautiful specimen. So if you're in the market for a big, nice quality Oscar, this is for you. Baby elephant nose knife came in this week. Also, I got in a beautiful red tail catfish. And check out these jumbo neon tetras. Beautiful size, beautiful color, all schooling together really really nice and last but not least on the list a beautiful green phantom pleco came in this week for you pleco affectionados now it's time for the top picks of the week my coral top pick of the week is euphelia glabrizens that is the torch coral we brought back some beautiful torches from this last show the uh, orange or golden torch and the green torches that you see in the back indo-pacific torches and I've got an Aussie black and gold torch, two of those as well. Those are my top picks. It's a fantastic coral if you really want to make a statement with something that's long and flowing and that gets big, beautiful heads of all these tentacles. Other than an anemone, nothing touches a torch. Hi guys, I'm Grace. We're here at Fishy Business for our top pick of the week, my top pick fish. Um, for this week is going to be the Mimic Eagle Eye Tank. Um, the Arcanthus Tristus tang. Like any of your other tangs, they they get some size to them, so this one about 10 inches. Really needs to go in about a, a 75 plus tank um, because they get that large. Um, I currently have three in the store right now. They're good for grazing, eating any type of algae. Um, they will eat like, you know, brine shrimp, pea, mysis, um, any type of stuff like that. So if you're interested in getting any of those, I've got got three of them in. I've got a little baby one and then I got like two medium sized ones. Um, but that's pretty much it. That is my top pick. They're beautiful um, and they also, I mean given the name, they mimic the eagle eye angel. So, but they're beautiful. And that is my top pick. Hi, I'm Kevin Walker. I'm the freshwater manager here at Fishy Business. My pick of the week, I got one of my favorite fish of all time. I've loved them since I was a kid. They're called glass catfish. They are pretty much totally invisible. There's not much to them really. They're totally a transparent fish for the most part. You can see their bones really well. When I was small, I used to call them skeleton cats. They're an import from Asia. They like to school. They usually shoal and hang out together in a little loose pack, usually behind some plants or something like that. Often they get overlooked in here, but I wanted to make sure I pointed these out to you because they came in looking really nice, and they're one of my all-time favorite fish. That's my pick of the week. Last catfish from Asia. Thanks for paying attention to the video this week. I know it's been a short one. We've been running crazy since the show last week and we're running right in. This is show time of the year for us here at Fishy Business. 
So stay tuned for more tank tip videos that will be coming your way after this one. And I hope you have a wonderful week, a great week, and come see us.